Hello, everyone, and welcome to the CCA League Week 2. We have a triple header lined up for you all tonight, and we're starting off in Division 2, the Tax Collectors from the University of Arizona versus Octos and Squids United from the Ohio State University. I am Mizuno, and I am joined by my wonderful co-commentator, Spicy. Spicy, how are you doing tonight? I am doing great, Mizuno. So we got two teams here, both like have a really strong prolific history when it comes to sp the Splatoon scene. And one thing, like March Madness hasn't exactly started yet in the college basketball world, but right now in the collegiate Splatoon world, we got some two big names here with University of Arizona, the Tax Collectors, and Octos and Squids United from the Ohio State University. As you mentioned, both these teams have the experience, are now playing in Division Two, and this is a rematch actually from entrance exam in the silver bracket semifinals where tax collectors did take that 2-1 victory over Ohio State. So I'm really interested to see what we can have from both of these teams here and I'm looking forward to an amazing match. You're absolutely right, Spicy, pointing out that matchup history between these two teams, although fairly recent. A 2-1 set, whoever winning that set, heading over to grand finals and our entrance exam one-off, I, I would say those are some pretty high stakes here. So I think the I think Ohio State is looking to hopefully take a few games and make their vengeance here in this matchup against the tax collectors. Yep, that's exactly what I want to see here. I'm expecting an absolute dogfight when it comes to both these teams. Both <laughs> these teams here, very good team. To, and like this early on in the season, if you to get the chance to have like a revenge games of sorts, could have like multiple implications going in later on for like potential playoffs, potential rematches in the future. This could be even the start of a rivalry between two pretty big schools here. Oh, that's a good thing to point out, too, now that there's history between the two. I also want to point out in last week, a week one of the CCA League, OSU took a 4-3 win over Old Bay B Brigade, and the tax collectors took a win off of Vermilion Tides 4-1. So both of these teams have one game under their belts, but two W's on their backs, and now talking like you pointed out spicy with the season ahead it'll be very crucial to maintain that momentum continuing on into the rest of the season so this will be a very important win for both of these teams yep going into clan blitz on museum del Fonsino for game one both these teams want to start off on the right foot here they both coming in off a week one win both the teams are going to look to make to capitalize on that momentum go into the second week get that 2-0 lead when it comes to the season and have potentially an amazing start and just ride that momentum going into the rest of the season. Totally agreed, Spicy. Taking a quick look at these comps here, Tax Collector's running a very forward aggressive comp. Meanwhile, we see Octos and Squids unite, united with a gun, a tri-slosher, and I like seeing that rapid blaster from, Sl from Slim Java. Yep, I'm really excited to see these new weapons come out. You see the Rapid Blaster Deco on the side of the Ohio State University, and you see the Z plus F Splat Charger from the side of the University of Arizona. Both these teams are going to try and use these new weapons to show off what they can do here and make this first push. Right now, both these teams are fighting off in neutral, just trying to build clams, just trying to find that numbers advantage before they make this initial push. No one has a super clam yet, power clam yet, but right now, with 30 seconds in, anything can happen. OSU in the pink here, looking to take a little bit of ground on this left side here. Slim Java and the Rapid Blaster working with Big Gay, getting some clean kills. Oh, but it's just one player left on the side of ONSU. I thought that fight was going to be a lot better from them. And now this is a very scary situation for Ohio State. Yep, all of a sudden now we're seeing the University of Arizona, they had a power clan ready. And now they're going to try and see if they're going to be able to make this push, but you see the crack skin come out. It's going to have a really hard time trying to get this push in. Now there's two down on the side of the pink, and all of a sudden now, University of Arizona, tax collectors already have that early lead. They're going to try and make something happen with this. They're already taking it down to the 59 here, and that wipe is probably going to end that push, but so far, tax collectors are going to strike first. Great plays there from the tax collectors in the teal. I do have to say, Ohio State was able to clutch that defensive front fairly well, given the Krakens that were coming out. So very good plays from the side of Ohio State. And now it's time for them to take back control of mid and hopefully seize some of that clam economy they lost earlier. 
Yep, and now we see that it's an even 3-3 advantage at the point. But now, right now, we're gonna try and see Ohio State trying to have that clamps ready. You have, see that there's a Kraken ready on their side in case they want to make an early push here. They want to try and probably find these numbers advantages first, try to get these picks before anything happens. You see the tactic board have that usage from the Trislaster Nouveau, have that extra speed, have that potential to play super aggressive here. Let's see if they're gonna be able to capitalize on this. You see the Reef Slider come out from the side of the University of Arizona. Not gonna be able to take that pick right there, but right now, you see the power clam with with the Ohio State University, and we're going to see if we're going to be able to make a push here. This is a great opportunity for the Ohio State, but they're going to have to watch out for this crab and the trips here. Oh, but the Kraken here from Ohio State getting a great kill on the tax collectors, and now it's a two-down situation. This is a very good position for Ohio State to be in right now. Of Ohio State having that power clam ready, you see that Kraken just put in so much work. Having two down right now is going to make things a lot harder for them to try and make that push. But you it's not over yet. They still have two minutes to go, and with a lead only at the 59 right now for Arizona, it's very possible that we could see a comeback from the side of Ohio State here. Agreed. Arizona does not have a safe enough lead there. There is still plenty of room and opportunity for Ohio State to take back the lead from them and a handful more clams. However, they're going to have to create those opportunities. You have yet to even get approach the tax collectors, Platt and Spinner. So again, they're just going to need to find more windows of opportunities to make that happen. Yep. And with Arizona having the power clam ready, it puts that extra pressure on Ohio State, trying to see if they're going to be able to stop any pushes from happening right now because right now when you're playing from behind as Ohio State you don't want to let the lead slip away. you don't want to let the lead get just increased right now with only a minute and a half to go any lead is going to be super hard to come back from Agreed. I have to point out the tax collector's position here. Blue Squid on that splash continuously taking that top spinner with that crab, putting on a lot of pressure on the side of Ohio State and they just can't seem to find their way forward time and time again. Yep, and right now you see Ohio State have the numbers advantage, or at least for a little bit more there. You see the Kraken have it is available, it's online, but right now the clam economy is still going to the University of Arizona. They have that power clam ready, and they have such a strong defensive position here. If they can just hold for the next 45 seconds or so, they don't, they have this first game just completely locked. But you see this the uh, tri strike available, it's online from the side of Arizona. Right now, it's just really hard from Ohio State to get in. Yeah, getting it's been the biggest challenge that Ohio State has had so far. And with Ohio State only having three specials online, one member down, two members down, and only one ball and a handful of clamps to work with, this is not looking like a very good opportunity here for the Ohio for Octos and Squids United. Ohio State is going to have to try and make something happen here. They don't really have the clams available right now. They have one power clam. They're going to try and pass it around. They have 10 seconds left they, before we go into overtime here. They're going to try absolutely everything they can to make this push happen. But with going two down right now, and with that breaking the barrier from Arizona, Arizona is going to go in to the set with an early game one win. And man, what an interesting match that was for the tax collectors because all they had was just that one push, that one moment of opportunity that they were able to take advantage of. And then that was it. It was just a pretty much a three and a half minute stall after that because they just kind of held up a wall and Ohio State just could not find a way to puncture through it and get their way in. Arizona's defense was flat out phenomenal when it came to the entire second half of that match. One thing I want to point out is that Octio was playing the Z plus F spy charger, but it doesn't seem like that even is their main weapon. Playing as the flex player for Arizona, instead of like having like that traditional like solid set anchor, they do have the flexibility from their flex to play that anchor role as needed and just like just control so much space with that splat charger. It made it super hard for Ohio State to get in. And now it's let's kind of see going into Splat Zones and Mako Mart if Arizona is going to be able to capitalize on this early advantage and just keep going with this momentum. Absolutely agree, Spicy. You're right to point out the flexibility and, and adaptability that the tax collectors have. They have a giant roster of eight players to work with. And you just mentioning Octio on the one hand, they're able to flex onto so many different weapons and play styles. I mean, same goes for multiple players on their roster. They have multiple front lines. I believe one of their players is a back line too, like a dedicated back line. So 
having that flexibility, adaptability in league play like this is just monumentous. Exactly. So we see that Arizona is obviously very strong on defense here. So what do you think you want to see from Octos and Squids United going into this next game? I I, I think it would be probably aggression and some I just some initiate initiation. Uh, there were multiple opportunities that they had where I would see three or four specials online for Octos and Squids United. They had two balls ready to go and just they hesitated a lot. I mean, they were sitting on those specials until they were picked off one by one. And I think they were just kind of panicking and scrambling there for something to happen. And honestly, I think just some initiation and someone to kind of step forward and start something for them, hopefully get the ball going. I think that would hopefully help them find new ways and new opportunities to take back the objective as we head into Splat Zones Macomart. I really like your point there. Like having that one player to just like take the initiative to find that opening to create that opening for the rest of their team it is going to be super important here having that like potential aggression that we could see might be enough to overwhelm the defense that we've seen from arizona maybe having this maybe having splat zones here is exactly what ohio state needs here they're only down one game so far it's still very early on in this set so having that being able to just mentally reset going into this game too they know they're still not out of it they won week one so they obviously know that they are capable of winning this game and just winning the set absolutely the mindset is so important here in league play and i mean of course just in splatoon competitive play in general with oh, that game was still nothing too crazy for ohio state they could they could certainly handle this tax collector team it wasn't a, just a total wipeout it was just one singular push so that being said game two splat zones macomart let's take a look at these these changes here what what changes have been made here yeah i just spot lane come out wow and two sloshings, one try and one sloshing machine on the side of Ohio State as Andriel also steps in on the side of Ohio State. I really like this Hydra pick here. Yep, one thing I'm surprised about is that the Hydra is nowhere to be seen on this team sheet that I am looking at right now from the tax collectors. I'm really interested to see like how this Hydra plays here, how they're going to be able to make use of like what this is. Like having that... Like, extra backline pressure is just going to be so powerful here being able to just control so much space have that booyah bomb ready you see the triple ink strike coming out now it's going to see an early zone cap but it's not going to be enough right here and we see oh nope they're still able to cap the zone and they're going to try and run away with this lead and see how hard they can push man the tax collectors in the yellow here they're in a very prime spot as they launch this booyah and following the wave breaker multiple specials to work with here and they're sitting in really good positions right now particularly that t-tech on that left stack ready to move in at a moment's notice so this is a great uh, that was a great start for the tax collectors yep the tax collectors now have that inkjet also coming out right now they're able to keep control of the zone now they see the zone goes back to a neutral position is it even 2-2 on both sides both teams are just going to try and keep up right now but it looks like the tax are going to keep up the zone even though they do have like a minor penalty right now to work through they're able to have these advantages here and you see the hydra just control so much space they're going to have the booyah bomb ready online have that ready soon now as well and this is going to add so much pressure right now for the side of ohio state to see if they're going to be able to fight back against us Oh, and a great snipe from Okamu on the side of Ohio State. That's the type of picks and plays that Ohio State needs if they want to take back the zone and find themselves in a prime position. And Okamu with the two snipes in a row make that three for Okamu. What a playmaker here. Yep, I love seeing the E-Leader have these snipes right now. Now you see Ohio State, they have a lot of control now. They're going to be able to push up on here, and you see that unfortunate from the inkjet being able to take care of the e-leader right now but right now ohio state looks like they're going to be able to take the lead here yes they do and now all of a sudden while the tax collectors look like they're going to be able to cap the zone it's still a relatively even game indeed spicy and now this constant back and forth is impressive because neither team can hold a very strict lockout situation which is very interesting because in Mako Mart, especially since both of these teams have really long range backlines, it is very easy to initiate and hold a lockout if you're able to get a couple of kills. 
but no, we see all of a sudden now the tax collectors have taken back the lead from Ohio State, and they are sitting pretty here as they go three down. Yep, and right as we see the tax collectors take the lead, Ohio State responds, taking down three members of the of Arizona, and now they're going to try and find us. We are back on seeing the E-Leader's point of view. We're going to see if they're going to be able to keep up with these amazing snipes that they've been able to get and have all these amazing picks. Right now, Ohio State's going to be able to work out of this penalty, and it looks like they're going to also try and take the lead right now. The Booyah Bomb takes an early flip, though, and all of a sudden, Ohio State gets the lead, but it's not going to be much for long it looks like right exactly with both the trips and the inkjet it wasn't it was just barely enough and it's forcing ohio state the, excuse me the tax collectors to retake the zone again and use up all their specials in this 2v2 situation they're going to take back the lead from ohio state and this is just looking like a very dangerous situation now as we're running out of time in this match Whip with one minute and a half less to go. It's been back and forth over and over again. And now you see Ohio State take back the zone. They're going to try and work through this penalty here. You see the slashing machine gets the pick, gets one, gets two. And now it's a big numbers advantage from the side of Ohio State. They're going to try and like push up here, try and control as much space as possible. Just going to try and make a lockout situation right now with one minute to go. Ohio State is looking good right now. They're going to try. They're going to get out of this penalty. You see the triple ink strikes come out from the side of Arizona. They're going to end up using that to put the zone in neutral and now it looks like maybe we're going to see a zone flip but no it looks like Ohio State's going to be able to get that advantage they're going to come back up here and now it looks like we might see them take the lead now with less than about 40 seconds to go and it's going to be really close going into these last 30 seconds or so man Ohio State is playing a great game right now by relying on rotating their positions and two clean kills from the tri slosher is going to end this match right here and there Ohio State is going to take the second game, making the set up 1-1. One thing I want to point out from Ohio State, you saw that increased aggression. You saw how they were able to just keep getting these picks and just force all these advantages, even though it was a consistently a back-and-forth match throughout that entire flat zones match. It's been really close, and you can tell that Ohio State is starting to find their footing, starting to show that aggression, starting to be able to find these kills. And having that, it's going to be pivotal going into these next few games. Yes, like you I just have to also point out Ohio State's positioning. The reason why they were able to get so many great clutch kills in that game was because they sat in fantastic positions with Okuma on that E leader getting on that right stack and get following up on three kills. I mean, that is the prime position to be at. Ohio State was actually able to create lockout situations for themselves. It's just that the tax collectors were really smart with how they were able to break from those lockout situations but again it just wasn't enough and Ohio State time and time again were able to create those really awkward situations for the tax collectors yep we saw in game one it that and game two that it's really just coming down to which team has the better positioning you saw in game one the tax collectors were able to just have an amazing defense position and then use that to just ride out the, the entire clan blitz match then you see an in game two on splat zones ohio state then shows that their amazing positioning being able to take the zone being able to keep the zone just like force these lockout situations making it really awkward for the other team to force something to happen so going into tower control knowing that both these teams do have their advantages and have the capacity to have these amazing positionings and get these amazing plays what do you want to see from either team going into this Oh, that is a great question, Spicy. I think the tax collectors have a lot of potential to break. Again, their breakout game is really good. I think we can see them continuously push the tower here on Eeltail Alley and find ways to slowly inch it forward. However, I think OSU will just completely just break down the door and try to ride the tower all the way through the third checkpoint. I think both of those teams have their own advantages and disadvantages of how they want to pace the game, but I that is my prediction of how it's going to go. I think the tax collectors are going to be able to slowly inch that tower forward and kind of just, again, just inch it like incrementally throughout the entire match, but I think OSEO will kind of just explode and just burst their way through. That's how I think the match will go. 
I love that point you just made. It's going to come down to a battle of pace. Having that slow versus fast game plan is going to be super interesting going into tower control. So tower control will have, like, obviously it's a linear path. It's a, you go at the pace of the tower. So it's going to be really interesting seeing how each team uses plays off of that. Knowing that, like, okay, we have to play off with the tower's movement. So, and it's very linear in that aspect. So seeing how each team adapts to the position of the tower and how it adapts to the other team's positioning in general is going to be really interesting as we go to game three. And like, this is basically a best of the five now with both teams here and both teams, knowing that it's one, one, they're both fairly even teams. It's been back and forth games. So it's going into this game three. I'm really excited to see what happens. Agreed. And I absolutely agree with your point about linearity like with the tower, just riding on one specific path. I think OS, I would like to think that OSU will probably take better advantage with the better positioning that they have displayed so far in these past two games. But that being said, heading into game three, looking at these comps, wow, the tax collector is going very aggressive here. And we see now a, a not and ZNF charger on the side of OSU. I really like these picks. Yep, one thing I want to point out on the side of OSU is that they went with the ZNF scope instead of the ZNF charger here. So you're going to see a little more range come out from them compared to the Arizona. So you see this little more range difference between the both teams here. And now we're going to see that Arizona's going to be able to take one pick here. They're not going to go two up now. They're going to be able to get onto the tower and it's going to try and make this initial push right here. You see the crab tank come out from their side. They're going to have be able to get up, make this position, but right now, even though they have this push, they're two down, and I'm wondering if that's going to be able to enough to just stall out this push. I have to point out Derpy Cows on the custom junior being hyper aware of Ohio State's positioning, able to get two clean picks just from quickly figuring out callouts and their opponent's positioning. Those are the types of plays I want to continue to see from the side of OSU. Yep, exactly. That's what we want to see from OSU as they're going to try and make this push now. You see them already cutting down the lead to about making it even, and now they're going to take the lead here. Despite this, they're going to go three down here, and it's going to have a bit of an advantage now in favor of Arizona, who's now able to take the tower, and they're going to try and push up. They're chasing down this charge. It's going to be really hard to get it. You see the triple ink strike come out as a panic burst option right here, and now they lose the lead, and now it's going to be right now a really close game still. This is just a bloodbath, trade after trade. These teams are playing a little scrappy right now, I have to admit, because they're just looking for that quick moment of, crap, they're two down, now's our time to go, go, go. And then they fall two down, and it's like, oh crap, now we gotta back up, up, up. These teams are playing incredibly scrappy right now, but I'm kind of here for it. Yep, I love like absolute bloodbath in terms of Splatoon, just seeing all this constant fighting, and that's been just the name of this entire set these back and forth interactions it's like okay one team goes two down the other team then goes two down each team is able to respond quickly now as we see the tower is going to revert back to neutral and it's still a fairly even match going into here both teams are going to have now a solid positioning here they're going to try and see just peel out each other out in neutral try and get these picks before they push on the tower Derpy Cows getting the kill that they needed onto the Ohio State T-Tech player because now Ohio State has no specials to work with to stop this tower. So hopefully this is the chance that the tax collectors need to start this push as they have three specials online and ready to go. Yup, and even all these special usage, you're going to see a lot of pressure come out here. The tower is going to go back to neutral here, but right now it still feels like an advantage right now for the tax collectors as they're able to get back on the tower and they're going to start trying to make this another push happen here. Ah, uh, but right as they say that, another great kill from the ZNF Charger on the side of Ohio State. Two kills! Wow! Oh, come! That was insane! Yep, this is the plays you like to see. You see all of these splats coming from both teams. And now all of a sudden, Ohio State's going to take the lead. They're going to go up to the second checkpoint here. Now going to take it. But now Arizona just takes back the tower. It's been back and forth. And now right as I say this, Ohio State's back on the tower. They're going to be at the checkpoint again. And no matter what I say, it's just going to keep flipping right here. Agreed. This just con this is just a constant tug of war between the two teams here. But now, finally, more players are back online for Ohio State. They're looking to inch this tower just a tad bit more with the help of the trips strikes. Ah, but they're going to have to back off from this second checkpoint here because of the tax collector's own trip strikes. You can see just these special usages from both teams being super important here. They're like 
push these advantages, push these splats. And right now, it, like, with about a minute to go, Arizona's gonna have the tower. They're now gonna go three down those. It's gonna prevent any push from happening. As now Ohio State is trying to sit pretty here with having a two advantage here. And now having the tower, they're gonna try and push this as far as they can to go with only a minute to go. Oh, and Jose getting two great kills there with the help of Big Gay's trip strikes. And this is, now they're finally able to blaze through that second checkpoint, cornering another player of the tax collectors. This is a very dangerous situation now as, again, these staggered respawns are now playing into the tax collectors' downfall here. Up, Ohio State is now able to be at that last checkpoint and they're gonna try break through it with only less than 30 seconds to go. It's gonna be really hard for... Arizona to try and make something here. The tower is now deep in their own territory and now they have to like reset the position. They have to fight back despite and now Ohio State's gonna be able to reset the position here with only 10 seconds to go before a potential overtime. Ah, uh, and the, the tax collector's Tetris player forced to use that reef slider as a chance to get out and there are the trips initiating the wipeout and game number three is going to fall to Ohio State. Wow. Yep. It's been coming down to just one big push from both teams. In every single game we've seen so far, it just comes down to one push. You can see these back and forth interactions when it comes to like most of the neutral game. But it really is just coming down to which team can get that breakthrough first. You see it happen now in Tower Control. Ohio State just able to find that one big push. And with that one big push, even though they will go down eventually before getting a knockout, they're able to reset their position and then force Arizona to play aggressive, force them to play desperate. And with that, you see Ohio State just like, we can do this. We can win this game here. And they find their win condition. And then now they're up 2-1 in this set. Agreed. I really like how you pointed that out, Spicy, because... It's like a game of will at this point for both of these teams. Whoever is the first team to crack will be the first team to fall. And OSU has proven so far to be the stronger will team. And the tax collectors are just slight, just a tad bit more vulnerable in these games. They're just, it's just little slip ups that just keep adding up time and time again until it creates just this giant domino effect that they're just unable to recover from. Exactly. So one thing I want to point out now from Arizona is that they have this massive weapon pool from almost every single player. So going into Rainmaker, we might see some things that are just different for the mode or just different playstyle things. So maybe we've seen Arizona try and be a little more defensive, a little more passive and like have that as their playstyle and it's work, at least in Clan Blitz. So now going into Rainmaker, generally seen as a really fast paced game mode and they might try to match the aggression from Ohio State here and see if they can if there can be the one to make that first initial breakthrough especially in a mode like Rainmaker where it can snowball really quickly once the checkpoints are broken I'm really excited to see how both these teams take that into mind right not only is the mode a just an incredibly fast paced objective but the map is also going to make this even more crazier because of how condensed this map is and how quickly the domino effect can just come into play. Mincemeat Metalworks, known for only having that one check, that just the two checkpoints, one on each side, most teams are going to default to heading towards that right side checkpoint because it's just the easiest to get to. But it's so quick for things to just completely tumble and get out of hand. And OSU has proven twice now, if they can make that breakthrough, they can let that domino effect just completely take over the tax collectors. Exactly. So like, it's gonna come down to like how every game has been here. I think I see on the side of the tax collectors that they did make a player substitution and tax has come in so this might maybe seeing their captain come in is gonna like ignite something for arizona here this might be the motivation they need to not only equalize the set but potentially use that to end up winning game four end up winning game five and then potentially win this entire set from here Agreed. Meanwhile, on the side of OSU, Andriel, their midline, who's been playing on that Nautilus, is still in here. 
Orchid, a very reliable slayer with the tr with the try and playing the T tech. We see Slim Java, who's been really great on the Rapid Deco back in game one of Clam Blitz Museum, and then finally we have Okamu, which has been. Okamu has been playing a really great game as the backliner, running both E Leader and the ZNF Charger. If they're able to get Okamu in a good spot to get some picks with an E Leader, oh my gosh! Like I think I think Okamu has the opportunity to just completely shut down the tax collectors. I love that word you used there. The ability to just shut down the tax collectors is probably how I would word it as well. Because if you're able to shut down tax collectors, whether it be on offense or on defense, that transitions very well into whether you want to make a defensive stop or an offensive push. In Rainmaker especially, the best defense can be the best offense and vice versa. So like having these advantages here, and we've seen some great play come out from each individual on both teams. So it's going to come down to like, who's going to want this more at this point? Agreed, agreed. I think it, both of these teams are really prime spots here because Arizona is still in this. Like this, this has a bit a complete blowout on their end. So honestly, it's not the end of the world for to be down two to one in this set. Like, it's fine. This is still recoverable. So at the end of the day, like, this is still a chance for them to turn things around and maybe rely, again, the tax collectors having their captain in now. Maybe that'll be the chance for them to, again, reignite something. Yep, completely agree on all every point you just made here. It's still going into only game four. This could just be the halfway point of the set here as we are going into game four, Rainmaker on Minsmoo Metalworks. Both teams... Both teams have been really good here, have some amazing plays on both ends. And now going into this next game, I'm just really excited to see what we see the adjustments come out from both teams. They both want to make this 2-0 start in the CCA season. And being in Division 2, this could be, like a, be just a highlight, just a, a glimpse into some potential amazing futures for both teams. Right, exactly. League play coming in as a huge factor for both of these teams. Different from tournament play because you're playing the same opponent for multiple games in a row. And again, not only does it come down to whichever team is just, you know, better at playing the game. It's also whichever team is better at making adjustments and changes mid set. That, I mean, so far, OSU has proven that they're able to turn things around when things don't go their way after that game one loss where they were just completely stagnant. So you're absolutely right to point out Spicy here with the league play just being a huge determinant in factoring how these teams are going to build their compositions, build their out their roster, and build out how exactly they're going to play out these map modes. Yep. Compared to how they played an entrance exam where it was a best of three situation, now you have this best of seven here. So like you can see the ad adaptations being made from both teams. Now they have to play the long game instead of just the play play all three version here. So now we're going into game four, Rainmaker on Minsmoo Metalworks. We're gonna now take a look into these comps and what stands out to you when you see these things? Ah, Blue Squid running the ZNF Charger. And oh, like I said, Okamu running with the E leader. This is Okamu's chance to completely shut down the tax collectors here. But I'm very curious with that not Charger combo on the side of the tax collectors, if they're gonna able to hold on. Yep. One thing I'm also gonna like want to point out from the side of Ohio State here, you see the foil, you see the squeezer come out from Andriel, and then you see the wiper also come out. So this is the first time I think we are seeing both these weapons from either team here. As now with 30 seconds in, we see both teams just try and find out, fight each other in neutral here. And now we see the Ohio State take the Rainmaker early. We're gonna not be able to make this early push here. They're gonna go for that right checkpoint, as we've been mentioning before. They have a numbers advantage here. They're gonna look like they're gonna be able to take this first checkpoint, but nope. The triple ink strikes come out, and it's gonna be really hard for them to make it. But now gets chased down and takes it only up to the 72. Great plays from Octa Octio on the T-Tech for the tax collectors, just stalling it just enough for their teammates to come back because they were in an awkward two down situation and Octio making the key play to stall the Rainmaker was crucial. They may have lost the checkpoint here, but the tax collectors have some room to work with and oh, they just grabbed it and launched it forward. A couple more points lost, but not the end of the world for the tax collectors. 
up. Now you see Arizona have the Rainmaker here. They're gonna have a slight numbers advantage. It looks like they're gonna try and respawn right right away and get this next checkpoint. Yup, that was an early break. They were able to find that advantage, find those picks, and then just break through. And now with both checkpoints being gone, it gets a potential for a snowball. As you see, Arizona already take the lead here, already up to the 42, and that's now with only a minute and a half in, we see already another back and forth game. Agreed, Spicy. And I thought this Insap was going to go for a flank here, but they were just able to back off safely to try to regroup with their teammates. With two specials online on the side of Octos and Squids United from the Ohio State, they're going to have to find their way back into mid and find a little bit more ground to gain to hopefully get that Rainmaker back forward into uh, the Tax Collector side of the map. And now we see the Rainmaker already back in neutral position here. Both teams are going to try and find this opening here, trying to make something happen, make a big play before they can win this game. So we've been seeing one big play has been the theme of this set so far from either team here. Which team is going to be able to make that play? You see the Trizuka come out and take a pick there. Now you see the Chargers just fighting it out, trying to see which team is going to be able to take this Rainmaker first and the have this position here but right now it, it's stalling right now these teams both know they don't have to make the move right away as they fight for positioning first before we eventually see the rainmaker getting picked up on the side of ohio state I was going to say the tax collectors are in a really awkward spot with having just the NZAP and the ZNF charger alive and losing that cooler in a really awkward situation. And with these staggered spawns again, Ohio State is able to move in on this opportunity, gain some ground and take the lead back from the tax collectors. Yup, and now it's taken all the way to the four. Now it looks like taking that down all the way and now Ohio State is in a prime position now to potentially get a knockout here. They have a numbers advantage they're up to and now they're kind of see we see the rainmaker already open but there's so much paint covered around it right now it looks like arizona is going to try and just reset the rainmaker here play around it they don't need to pick it up right now in their position here they just want to let it reset get it to a better position here as you see right now but right now ohio state having these numbers advantages that you've been seeing time and time again it's been really hard so far for arizona to make any pushes now especially as ohio state has the rainmaker and my god Huge kudos to this this Wiper player, this Watana player on the side of Ohio State, just been going ham and causing complete havoc on the side of tax collectors. They may have died just there, but they created space and opportunities and just again, scrambling basically the tax collectors from not focusing on the Rainmaker. Yep, and you see some amazing carrying so far from the side of Ohio State right now. They've been able to just force all this space happening. It's been really hard for Arizona to find these defensive stops right now, especially as there's this big advantage so far from the side of Ohio State. You see the wall come out, it's gonna be able to stall for a bit. Now Ohio State has the Rainmaker again. With 30 seconds to go, they have control. They're in very much a position to win this game. Man, again, the Slim Java on that Splatana Wiper. They were just in a great spot to apply some intense pressure on the side of the tax collectors and preventing them from going any more forward. Finally, they're able to get that ground back and they seize the Rainmaker with only 10 seconds left on the clock. This is a very dangerous situation as they're only working with one other player at this moment. Up. It's going to have to come down to this last push here. What can Arizona do? They have the Rainmaker. The ball is in their court now. They have to find an advantage here. Right now, it's an even 2-2 right now. But you see the Zuka come out. And what a stop. What an absolutely phenomenal defensive stop to just end that game in, in Rainmaker. And now Ohio State up 3-1 to one in the set. I mean, just fantastic plays on the side of Ohio State for securing that win. I think Ocom, I didn't talk about Ocom that much that match because I kept complimenting Slim Java's gameplay, but I think all the players from Ohio State were able to execute their jobs and their roles during that match. And that was how they were able to consistently exert so much pressure on the tax collectors and get the Rainmaker all the way down to four, almost essentially knocking out the tax collectors in that Rainmaker match. I mean, what a great game from OSU. Exactly. OSU is just playing super good. Despite that game one loss, they that didn't shake them whatsoever. You see them just win game two, win game three, win game four. They're now going into game five on match point. They're riding off an absolute high of momentum right now. Ohio State's going to look to try and close this out early now. 
Agreed, agreed. The momentum here is just so phenomenal on the side of Ohio State. It's something to really work off of because you, when you have that momentum and that tailwind on your side, you just feel unstoppable. Your confidence and your self and your esteem and the reliability of your teammates are just up, up, up. But this is something that the tax collectors are going to have to take and they're going to have to punch back right now if they want to remain alive in this set. And they could do it. They have the tools and the opportunities to do so. And now it's just being able to execute. Yep. And we're going back to Clan Blitz. We see how Arizona was able to execute their game plan in game one they were able to find that first push find that early lead and then just hold on defense we saw how arizona's defense just came through on in game one and now if they can do the same thing here on game five clan with an input art academy we might see another like momentum shift here arizona they very much know that this is their last they're down to their last chance to stay alive in the set so every game is going to matter even more important importantly now for them going into game five here on clan Woods. absolutely right with the stakes being so high this is where it counts the most and i think like you've said with their with their game plan from the first game in Muse in clan blitz museum deal Fonciano, they can certainly try to utilize that composition again and that strategy into inkbot art academy but they're gonna have to be really careful of a couple of things. I could totally see Slim Java running that wiper again and just going ham on both of the stacks on this map. So they have a couple of key players that they're gonna have to keep their eye on to ensure that no one sneaks behind them and pop, pops the basket right, you know, right behind their eyes. This is a very dangerous game that they can play here. One other thing I want to point out is that from both teams, you're seeing just amazing depth from their rosters right now. You're seeing the constant uses of their substitutes, being able to swap in players in and out based on the game mode, based on their player strengths. It just show, goes to show how much talent is on the rosters of both teams here. These teams have been fairly even throughout this entire set. It's been back and forth, back and forth in every single game. We're going into game five, and even though Ohio State is up three to one, this set isn't exactly over. Absolutely agreed, Spicy. Now, taking a look at these comps that they bring, the tax collectors bringing a fairly reminiscent and fairly similar comp to what they did in game one with that 96 Gal and Tetris combo, the Kraken Reef Slider combination synergy right there. And then on the side of the Ohio State University, we see a Sasha Machine, Try, and also another Gal. So very, very likable comps here and very easy to work with. Yep. One thing I want to point out is that both these teams are running a fairly fast comp here, not opting to have like a Splatling or Charger as their anchor role, instead relying on the 96 to being able to have that long range pressure. And now you see from both teams here, they're both going to try and find those clamps, just try and get these picks to find an early advantage here. Uh, greed. And this is like the neutral situation that you want right now for both of these teams. With two specials online for the tax collectors, this is a great chance for them to start inching their way forward and taking back some of the ground that they're missing to start some of their pushes. With one minute in, both neither team has decided to make a push yet. They're both trying to find these clams. Neither team has built up a power clam yet either, as now you see some amazing play from the side of the tax collectors. Just gonna try and find these pushes, find his advantage. They're now three up, and you see the Kraken come out right now. It's gonna be this could be massive if the tax collectors are gonna be able to find a power clam. You see the splash matic has one ready. They're gonna oh they go down though, but despite that, they're able to find the opening and they're gonna take the lead early, going in, having Oh, go up to the 77. Hey, that was a too bad for the tax collectors. There was only a couple of things there that they need to improve on from that push, and then they will be golden for another opportunity to strike. That Kraken, unfortunately being wasted there, not able to get a kill, and just kind of flopping around on that slick ramp there. But if they're able to just work that Kraken just a little bit better here, like how Slim Java is right now, making a lot of room, and their Platic getting a kill, that would be the opportunity that they would need. 
up in Ohio State. You saw them have the power from. You saw them try to get that push in, but you see the defense from Arizona come out in full force right there. Now Ohio State has the power climb again. They're gonna have put up the wall, gonna try and find one more chance at an opening here. Right now, both teams are in neutral right now, just trying to find the openings. You see a lot of specials on the side of Ohio State come out here. You see the Kraken come out here already up at the at the basket here. You see the jump ins come in. They're gonna see potentially a score. No, oh, it's gonna get stopped. Oh my gosh, and I saw exactly what Ohio State was doing there. Utilizing the Kraken to break through and break in to create a jumping spot for their players to come in, but it looked like it wasn't very well executed because one player missed the ball, so they were in a really awkward spot. And now all of a sudden, as I'm speaking, the tax collectors are able to break open the basket. Oh, but they're just unable to find the lead coming up one clam short. Up. It's been that the entire tale of this game so far. Both teams, you can see the game plans from both teams are very well thought out here, but they're just missing just a little bit in terms of execution. Tax collectors were able to respond very quickly to falling down to the deficit and almost took the lead right there. Now you see both teams just trying to find their clamps, being the build of the economy. You see a lot of specials come out from have from both teams. You see, want to see something happen come out right now. Ohio State does have a ball ready. They're going to try and potentially just weigh out a situation here before they're going to be able to make a push. Right, I think they're both teams are kind of waiting for the crack and the strike and there's Slim Java on that crack and already making some moves on their plat. This might be the opportunity. Both Krakens are coming out actually and nothing comes of it. I thought both of these teams were going to try to move in on it, but it just came and went. Exactly, yeah. We see the Krakens being used on both teams here, and you could, you see these so many potential options for a push, but like, the defense on both teams have been just strong enough to prevent these pushes from happening. It's been back and forth, and each team has had the opportunity, but right now, aside from those like really fast pushes right here, as you see the Kraken come out on the side of Ohio State, right towards the basket, and gonna force another big option here. You could potentially see another big play. Yup, you see Ohio State break through the, the barrier. They're gonna go up again. They gotta go all the way to the 37 here, and you gotta see if they're gonna be able to push this advantage even more, or if, or if Arizona's gonna get one more chance to potentially bring this back. Great plays from Ohio State. There's the execution that they needed. Oh, that was an unfortunate splat on the splash wall there. Oh, but anyways, that was the play that Ohio State finally needed. And now with only 15 seconds left and the tax collector's hopes on the line, they are gonna have to come up big here as they are holding on to two balls right now at the ready to go. Yup, with five seconds to go, you see two balls ready on the side of the tax collectors right here. They know they can make this push happen. They are just one play away. You see the Kraken come out, but it gets splattered in the, the startup animation. So right now, even though it's an overtime situation, it very much feels like Ohio State. They can just hold on defense here. They're able to find that kill right there, get these splats. And right now, that's a wipe. And that might just be the dagger that wins the game and wins the set for the Ohio State University. The, the Ohio State University. We have to put a strong emphasis on that. The Ohio State University has officially taken the set 4-1 against the University of Arizona, the tax collectors. Wow, what a set. Yep, you saw some great play from both teams in throughout this entire set. All these games have been really close. It just came down to which team makes that one big moment have their one shining moment as akin to all the march madness hype that we're seeing right now which team finds this one play that's all they needed from each team in each game one play determines this entire set so far because of how evenly matched both teams are we are we just saw some great play and it just came down to which team can execute when it really matters most Right, exactly. The execution was all that matters because who, that's going to determine whoever comes up on top. And time and time again, we were able to see Ohio State execute time and time again. And just the tax collectors falling short, unable to, to follow up on those opportunities. However, that's not to say that 
that was it. a great performance from the tax collectors. I loved this team, watching this team and some of the plays that they were making. Derpy cows on the custom junior. I could tell they were making some great plays throughout that set. Tax coming in as well rely as a as a great reliable front line. Uh, this team has tons of potential, and their season is not over yet. Exactly. While Ohio State goes up 2-0, tax collectors are. Being at 1-1, it's still only week two. They still have a lot of potential to to win the next few games, push for a playoff spot, and who knows? We might see a, this rematch happen again in playoffs, and then this could be that could be the third part of what could be an amazing rivalry brewing. You saw Arizona win an entrance exam. Now Ohio State wins in the regular season. I'm really hoping we see these teams play one one at least one more time in the future. Ooh, the tension is bubbling underneath these two teams now. What an exciting set. But we're not over tonight, folks. This is a triple header on Saturday night of the CCA League Season 3. So we just saw a Div 2 matchup here between Tax Collectors and Ohio State. But get ready. We have another exciting Div 2 matchup between two strong seasoned teams between Unidentified Flying Outbreak versus the Vermilion Tides. With that being said, this is our time. Uh, Spicy, where can the good folks find you? If you have Twitter, please follow me at at 2 spicybm And then if you just to follow up with my random shenanigans when it comes to Splatoon or whatever game I'm playing at that point. Sick. And folks, you can find me, Mizuno, at M-I-Z-U underscore N-0 on both Twitter and Twitch. And be sure to stick around because we're not done. Again, this is a triple header for y'all tonight. So don't go anywhere, folks. We'll be right back with more CCA League.